Awesome. Well, I hope you gained some good insight from Mark's presentation. And um, it's 10 after, so I think we should get started. So let me go to our introduction. So yeah, we are uh, working today. Uh, so working your social media 101, and I know Mark came up with another title as well for his presentation. But uh, this webinar, we're going to be focusing on the working experience of running a full service social media company with CEO Mark Sorensen from Social High Rise. And we're going to take more of a high level drill down into social media and finding your social presence, uh, creating some magic with some practical approaches and principles that Mark has gained over the years. And also be ready to um, be part of the presentation. So if you have questions, please jump in. And I'm sure Mark said he wanted to do some examples. So be ready to put some of your um, company information out there and we can see how to put it to practical use. So be ready to be a volunteer. And um, I wanna say Mark, thank you again for showing up and I'm gonna turn it over to you and we'll get this going. All right, let's do it. Okay, thank you for that kind, warm introduction, Tim. It's totally my <laughs> pleasure to be here. Tim is really awesome, and uh, his beard makes me smile every time I see it. So bonus points to Tim's beard. I'm going to go ahead and present now. Uh, let's see. All right, so... Tim gave me a nice little introduction here, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll just double up and tell you who I am. So I'm, I, I founded a company called Social High Rise. We are based here in Chico, and we manage social media for restaurants all over the country. Um, I, would, I would say that locally, I, I, I definitely do have some, some good expertise on, on social media. I would say that nationally, I have about as much expertise as the people who are the gurus. So not that I, I, I care to, to toot my horn, but for the last nine years, we have worked with thousands of different small businesses, mostly restaurants, and helped them succeed on social media. So we have lots and lots and lots and lots of experience, and our entire business is more or less like a, a little... Uh, a little laboratory where we get to test and try and prove and disprove different theories and strategies. And, and our expertise is, is very much geared towards uh, uh, restaurants, but we've also found that the principles that we employ with what we do for our clients applies to every single business. So I don't think there's anyone in this group that is involved in a restaurant and that's totally fine. So don't necessarily check right out and think that what I'm, I'm sharing with you, it doesn't apply. It totally does. It totally applies. Um, I was going to do the 101 basics, but look, if you need help with the 101 basics, there are a billion YouTube videos out there that you can watch. And that stuff to me is fairly boring. So I'm sorry, but I'm pulling a little bit of an audible here. And we're going to get to some of the principles that I think are more important and more impactful. Um, I wouldn't say that these are advanced. I would say that they, and it's not rocket science, it's simple stuff, but these are the things that I constantly see businesses not do. And I see them as some of the most fundamental things that you could be and should be doing for your business. So uh, that's what I want to share. And it's all around this theme of how to make social media an extension of customer service. In our business, we we view social media through the lens of customer service. Of course, as a, as a restaurant, customer service is a big deal, but it, no matter what your business is, customer service should be a big deal on all, on all fronts. Okay, so all of you who are uh, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, business owners, seasoned, veteran, rookies, whatever, you are all super, super busy people. I guarantee it. Um, the busiest people on the planet, I would say. And here's, let me just kind of recap what, what you're dealing with basically. And then, and again, this is, this is all through the, through the lens of a restaurant. So forgive me, but you get where I'm coming from. 
So if you're running a business, like you've got to deal with all of the things, the scheduling, the ingredients, payrolls going up, you've got to figure out your, your market shifting to this and you've got to figure out how, uh, how to schedule your, your employees and there's the side work and the bartenders are showing up drunk and you're covering shifts and there's broken equipment and your supply chain broke and you've got to readjust your pricing and then minimum wage or you got inflation. There's so many things that you have to deal with. And then right now in particular, then there's COVID, right? COVID like threw this huge wrench in the system, shutdowns and layoffs and unemployment. And you've got to figure out how to do delivery and face max and PPP loans and PPE and pausing and reopening. And there's c cases going up. There's just a bit look like I don't need to preach the choir here, but it has been like a, a complete roller coaster fraught with whiplash. There's just been business operations whiplash across the board. And if you had a one year or a five year plan, you have thrown that plan basically out the window for the last six months because it doesn't apply. And it's basically, things are changing every week, they're changing every, every month. So we are in a very different environment. So as if running a business was hard enough, it's much, much harder because of uh, the climate that we're dealing with. Then you've got social media, if you're thinking about it. And if you're here, hopefully you're thinking about it. And when you think about it, you think, okay, I got to figure out Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Yes, but you also got to figure out these. It's all of this. It's Google reviews. It's Yelp reviews, your TripAdvisor reviews, everything about your business on the internet. You've got to figure this stuff out, right? And, you know, at first glance, it might feel like fairly simple, but then you start thinking about it and it's like, oh, actually there's like the ad campaigns and the SEO and the stories I got to post and then analytics and contests and captions and, and, and what's my click rate, my, my, my reach and, and, and what are influencers and how do I do that? Social media can quickly become something that feels overwhelming also, right? So here's the deal. I'm here to tell you that social media is a lot more simple than we make it out to be. It is about this. It is about customer service and people and relationships and authenticity and humans. That is what social media is meant to be about. It is a marketing tool. It can be used for selling directly. There's a whole ads platform built on top of social media for Facebook and Instagram in particular. But at the core of it, for businesses in especially, to win on social media, the core focus should be about how can you give good customer service? That's like point number one, okay? So not that you need to be you know, convinced that, so, that customer service is important. I'm gonna convince you anyways. So there's some data, turns out, that backs up why customer service is important. For example, this, consumers will spend more money with companies that deliver great customer service. AMX did a, did a study and they were looking at the difference between satisfied customers and highly satisfied customers. Like that small little jump from satisfied to highly satisfied. And the difference was this, 68% higher frequency, 82% more revenue, 89% cust longer customer lifetime. 244% more lifetime revenue. That's a big deal. If you're selling products, your unit economics go up dramatically if you can get to your customers to be highly satisfied. So there is very good business sense in, in putting a, a huge focus on customer service across the board. And when it comes to social media, this is where you can apply a lot of pressure and get a lot of results out of it. Okay, so. Those are huge numbers. They are huge. Yeah, yeah. I, it's like, yeah. you can't make this stuff up. I mean, if I were to make something up, I, I wouldn't even go that high. <laughs> exactly. So again, to recap, look, if, if you guys log out of this webinar in the next two minutes, and this is all you take away, then I've done my job. Social media is about these things, relationships, people, customer service authenticity, connections. If you make it about that, that's how you get people to come more often, spend more money, tell more of their friends, tip you better, 
write good reviews about you. This is how you monetize your customer base better. And to be really clear, yes, you can acquire new customers on social media. That is done most effectively with paid ad campaigns. Paid meaning you're paying Facebook to put your message in front of people who don't know who you are, who don't have a connection to you, typically. And, and that's, that's a great avenue and that's super successful. What I'm talking about is you have people who will follow you on social media and they are mostly your current customers. They're probably also a lot of like your friends and definitely your moms are on there too for your business page. And they may be like your highest engaging people and bless their hearts. We love them anyways. But when you're talking about organic strategy, what you're, the, the communication you have, what you're posting about, the things that you're talking about to your customers, you're talking to actual people who already know who you are, right? And so it's, it's not so much acquisition, although even that can acquire new customers. This is about retention and reactivation, increasing average order values, increasing frequency, right? You can monetize your customers better by making it about customer service. But it's not, it's not like I'm going to treat you like an ATM machine, Mr. Customer, and I'm going to try to tell you about every special and every way that you can spend your money with me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about things that they actually care about. So let's, let's get, it, get into it a little bit. So one of the big questions that we get asked all the time is like, well, how do I deal with this online interaction? This is the second thing. If you log out after this, like, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy, right? How do you deal with people online? You deal with them the same way you would deal with them in person. It's that simple. And if you pause and you think about, gosh, if this person was talking to me and saying these things or saying this stuff about me or mentioning me like this on the internet that I'm seeing, but it was in person how, and I saw this person in front of me, what would I say to them, right? And if you, if you actually like walk yourself through that process, you'll find that it actually makes a lot of sense. You would, you would treat them differently. You would talk differently. You would be much more worried about how they perceive you. You'd be, you'd be gracious and you'd be humble. And you, you know, of course, unless you're, uh, you know, a sociopath, maybe you wouldn't do that stuff, but none of you are. So we're good. So treat them the same way that you would treat them if they were in, in front of you. That's, that's the takeaway. And then this is, then this is the response, right? All right, I'm going to show you. So the first thing that I want to share with you for how to do this is seems really basic, but it's probably the most fundamental thing that you should ensure that it, that happens. And it's make sure that, that your information about your business is accurate everywhere online. And you're probably first thinking, yeah, well, I got that covered. Like my website has my right hours and, you know, we've got our, our phone number and our address there. And I'm pretty sure Google shows it the right way. And if you have a Yelp page, I think Yelp's, Yelp does it that same way too. But guess what? There's actually like dozens and dozens and dozens of online directories. It's not just the big ones, Google being Yelp. It's not just them. There are tons of sites that will list your business, like americantowns.com. And you've never heard of americantowns.com, I guarantee it. And why should you? Because nobody goes to that site. Right. But there's value in still having your business on something like americantowns.com. Right. I'll show you why. So, well, and first of all, just to back up, like when I talk about your information, it's, it's your, your, your menu, your services, your hours, your address, your phone number, even like the way that your business is listed. I can't tell you how many times I'll see Bob's Burgers on Yelp and I'll go to some other site and it's Bob's Burgers Emporium LLC, right? You'd be surprised, but this whole world of all these sites, it's kind of an incestuous world. These sites like copy and paste from each other. They steal information. Like a lot of them steal from Google, but Google gets it wrong too. And if you've ever noticed, or maybe a business, you know, Google's asked you, they will let regular people like chip in and, and provide information about businesses, right? And guess what? Consumers are kind of dumb. They usually don't get it right. And so they can screw up your information and then all that trickles down and it's not very long before something is wrong somewhere, right? And that's a problem. So for example, here is a restaurant. It it, honestly, it took me like two minutes to find an example for this. Here's a, here's a, it's like a panini shop, right? And this is their website. 
grilled cheese for seven ninety nine, and tuna melt for nine forty nine. And if you go to their Yahoo listing, this is what the pricing shows. Okay. Now, if you were a customer, like, you know, you look at that and you're like, oh, well, that's wrong. You know, well, but whatever, that's wrong. It's actually a big deal, right? If you were a customer and you look online and you saw that the price of your favorite panini was five ninety nine, and you call them up, you say, hey, I want to order this panini. And, you, and they say, okay, great, that'll be 10 bucks. And you're like, what? Yeah, the panini is seven ninety nine. You'd be pissed. Not because like you can't afford eight bucks, pissed because you were expecting one thing and then they bait and switched you to something else, right? You would feel like you had been like had, you'd feel like you were taken advantage of only because like it was just the wrong information, right? So if you're running a business, do you want customers to have that feeling about your business? No, never. Because that customer probably isn't coming back. And in fact, they're probably going to spread some bad publicity about you because you didn't make them feel good. It's just because you had the you you had the wrong expectations hanging out on the internet, right? So this is a big deal. Or or uh, just <laughs> other examples are like if they go to order the the grilled cheese and it's like uh, we haven't had that on our menu for like five years, and and they're like, well, I want the grilled cheese, but we don't we don't offer it. Well, why the heck does the internet tell me that you offer it? I don't know. Well, you guys are a bunch of clowns. I'm out. Right. That's the feeling that you, I'm being a little bit dramatic, but people, some people are more dramatic than that. Right. You never know. Hey, so, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that's just a comment, but um, you know, I've been, we've been doing a little posting thing with um, restaurants with patios right now. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm finding like with COVID, it's really hard for them, which I'm sure you see all the time. Another example is just the hours thing. Their hours are totally different on the website than their Facebook page to Google. Yep. And, um, but it's, they're just, it's hard to keep up because they're closing and opening all the time. That's exactly right. Like right now it's particular, I mean, that's what this slide is, is. That's the point you're making the point that I wanted to make too. Thank you, yeah. Heather. Yeah. Because of COVID, there are so many changes to every business. If you run a business now, odds are something is different now in the way that you do business than it was pre COVID hours. Are you doing delivery? Are you doing curbside? Is your menu, your services, or your shipping options different? Everything is different. It's just, it just is, right? And what we're finding is that consumers, they don't know what to trust because the internet's outdated. And guess what people do? And, and, and this has probably been you. Like if this is you, you can go ahead and nod your head and be like, yes, Mark, you are totally right. You know so much they write you off. That's what they do. They write you off. If you, if you go to your favorite restaurant, like you've got a restaurant rotation, you go to these same restaurants all the time and you see that they're out, they, they've got regular hours and you show up and they're not open. They're off the list. They're just off the list. You're not going to go Sherlock Holmes them and try to investigate to figure out exactly what's the truth and what's right. Because guess what? You're going to figure it out knowing that next week it could still be different. They could have changed it again. So consumers are like, they're, 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 they're fatigued. They're fatigued of trying to figure out what's real and what's right. Okay. And so they will, they'll just write you off. You'll lose their trust. So yeah, Heather, to your point, it is hard. It is challenging. It's really hard to keep track of this stuff. And yet it's still incredibly important that they do that. The restaurants that we work with, some of them have put their head in the sand and they've said, I just don't know what to do. I'm going to shut down and I'm not opening till next year. I don't even care. I'm just going to, if I, the second I open my, my landlord's going to start charging me rent. Every vendor's going to be after me and I know I won't be able to keep up my revenue to, to meet the demand. So I'm just going to shut down and head in the sand. Fine. Other restaurants, other businesses are like, I'm a fighter. I'm going to fight this. We're going to be scrappy. We're going to hustle. We're going to, we're going to evolve and figure this out. And the one thing that has made those efforts successful is keeping their customers clued in to how they're changing and evolving. Guess how they're doing that? Social media, social media. It's not, they're not calling them on the phone. They're not sending out an email blast. Maybe some of them are. They're like real time giving people updates. Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we changed this. Hey, this is all updated. And at the same time, they're going, Heather, across all of these different sites and updating them. Make, uh, now these are our clients, so we do this work for them, of course but we make sure that it gets done. 
right? Now, there's another reason why keeping your business information updated across all these sites is important. Because Google looks at them. You might not know who americantowns.com is, but Google has crawlers that crawl and they pay attention to americantowns.com plus all of these other small little directories. So you might not care about the consumers that may or may not find you on these little niche tiny sites, but Google's looking for two things. They're looking for consistency and relevance. Consistency meaning they're basically looking at all of the information that is listed about your business and does it match up. If it doesn't match up, they literally consider them two different businesses. It's like completely separate. If they do match up, you get this like combined credit. I'll call it Google credit, right? You get some credit in Google's eyes. The second one is relevance. How long ago was your information updated? Was it yesterday? Was it four years ago? Right? And so all of this helps your local, local search, like local SEO. Like if you were to say, you know, best flower shop near me, Google on Google, you'll notice Google's not going to serve you a bunch of website listings. They're going to serve you a bunch of business listings like a three to five list of, of businesses. How do you get on top of that list? You do this, right? Google's constantly trying to figure out who the relevant businesses are, and this is how they do that. So by keeping it updated, you're not only doing right, giving good customer service to your customers by making sure what they, what they get is accurate, but you're also playing to Google's rules. And like in 90 days, when we start to do this for restaurants, in 90 days, most of our clients they see double the amount of people who are actually clicking on their Google listing. That's insane. That's like such an easy win, double, right? And then it just continues to go up because they're just getting tons of tons more traffic. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is this. Acknowledge your customers online. Oh yeah, no duh. Yeah, but really do it. Actually do it. So here's how you do it, right? So first of all, Customers are already talking about you online, especially if you're a restaurant. Like they're already doing this. If, you, if you've ever done this or seen someone do this, take a picture of your food, right? People do this all the time. Like wannabe influencers, you'll notice on Instagram, they'll take whatever picture is of them. You'll notice that they've tagged like every single brand of clothing that they're wearing. They'll tag the, the building and business behind them. They'll tag like... The, the jewelry maker, they'll tag like, every, and then their friends who are with them, they'll tag everybody they can because they're trying to be like noticed and be influential in that way, right? So consumers are already trending to, to generate content about your business and then tag you and give you credit for it, right? So what I'm suggesting is acknowledge them when they do that. So let's show you how this works. So here's a restaurant, it's out in New York called Chirp. They're a Peruvian rotisserie chicken. It's actually really baller food. So this is their Instagram profile, okay? But if you click right here on mobile, you can see all of the photos that people have tagged Chirp in. And that's what this looks like, is that right? Yeah, almost looks the same. So here's, here's what they're tagged in. A bunch of photos, they look great, right? They look fantastic. These are just people, regular customers, whoever who have tagged Chirp in their photos, great. But then on top of that, you may not know this, you can actually, so this is, you can actually tag like a, a, a location in your photo, right? So one is like tagging an Instagram profile, the other is tagging a location, right? So you can do that for your business. And here's all the photos that people have tagged the location. It's a whole new crop of photos, right? That you may not have ever seen. Your business probably has some. And they're good photos, right? This is just a small sample for this restaurant, but there's actually a ton. Now, let's just take this guy, okay? Some rent, the, Gian Cabru, homeboy here, had his birthday at this restaurant. His buddy was a good photographer, took the picture, gave it to him, and they celebrated his 29th birthday. High five, homeboy, okay? So if, if, if you were Chirp, don't you think it would be a good idea to acknowledge this, right? Don't you think that it... Again, if we're thinking about what would you do in person, would you see this going on and be like, okay, like everybody get back to work. Don't even look at them. Don't even look at that party out there. Just get to work. Don't talk to them. Don't look at them. Don't make eye contact. Just ignore them. No, you would be like, hey, happy birthday. 
right? Guess how hard it is to acknowledge them? It's that hard. You just click the, the heart button. That's how hard it is. It's easy, right? And by doing that, you've acknowledged them. So acknowledging, looks, uh, acknowledging them looks like this, like their comments, like their photos, right? Just like them, just as simple as that. If you wanna get deeper, then you would do this. So here's another photo at Chirp. And this woman is talking about how she's waiting for the mega bus back from New York and she always comes here and she, she gets her rotisserie chicken. Now look, like a half drank bottle of Haritos, that's not like the most flattering photo necessarily, but who cares? Like she wrote like a cool story about them, right? Now, if you look deeper, let's look at the comments. Check this out. Hey, I just went there because of this post. It was delicious. This happens all the time, all the time for businesses, restaurants, small businesses, service businesses, this kind of stuff happens and you, and you don't even know it because you're not paying attention, but it does, right? So guess what? You just heart, heart, like, like, that's all you have to do. It's really, really simple. This woman spread so much publicity, so much word of mouth by talking about this restaurant and guess what they did? They did nothing. They, they ignored her, right? That's not good customer service. And they could have gone a little bit further and be like, oh my goodness, we love this, right? Now, let me just tell you what happens, right? So comment on their photos, like the photos that they tag you in, the ones that, they, that they're, they're acknowledging you in about you, comment on that stuff. That's like step two. Step three is actually liking and commenting on their posts about their life that has nothing to do with you, right? Like sneaky, right? But it's really, really re relevant. Can I tell you one little tricky secret that we do? Don't tell anyone we do this because like some people will be like, oh, that's like, uh, that, is that like ethical? It's totally ethical. Make a list of your competitors, go to their Instagram pages, and then go start e engaging with their followers and see what happens. Go start. Literally doing that list. right now. <laughs> do it right now. And just yeah, go, to I, their, I straight up am. <laughs> go to their, that's go funny. to their followers, look at the content that they're, that they're talking about and just start hearting heart heart, write a little comment. Oh, this is rad. Right. And, and that's it. It's selfless. You're not asking for anything. And I guess what they're going to do. They're going to check you out. They're probably going to follow you, especially if they already follow a page that that's your competitor, right? Sneaky, but all you're doing is just paying attention to people. It's attention. That's it. You're acknowledging people. Okay. So this is what happens when you acknowledge them. A giant, a giant cocktail of human created endorphins and serotonin, maybe some oxytocin mixed in there is going to hit their brain and they're going to feel it go like tingling down their spine and they're going to get chills in their body and they're going to smile and they're going to look at it and they're going to show their friends. Oh my gosh, look at this business, like totally engaged. Oh yeah. Did I tell you, did I tell you that, did I tell you that chirp? Liked my photo? Yeah, they totally saw that. Yeah, Chirp and I, we, we talked. They're going to feel good. And you made that happen. Your business made that happen for them. That is extremely powerful. That's the kind of juice that gets people to come more often, spend more money, spread more word of mouth. When you can do that to a human, it's really powerful. And it's hard to forget. It's really hard to forget. I'll tell you one story. I know that I can go on forever. I did this once with Safeway years ago. I ate their $5.99 sandwich soup and chip or sandwich drink and chips for $5.99. And I was like, this sandwich is awesome. And it was so cheap. And I'm eating it for lunch and I'm going to do it all week long. And I was like, I'm going to tweet about this. So I took a picture and I tweeted about it and I added Safeway's handle. And, and Safeway like re replied to my tweet. Look, I'm smart enough to know that it wasn't like Safeway's CEO or their brand manager or anybody with power. It was probably some intern who was actually doing that to me. But irrationally, for years, I have felt this like insanely irrational connection to Safeway. I actually hate shopping at Safeway because they are always out. I actually hate shopping there because they, they're out of stuff and, and they are, there's always a huge line for no reason at all. I just, I, so I go to Rayleigh's, right? But even still, I'm like fighting this. Oh, I should go to Safeway. I should go to Safeway because like I have this feeling that we have this bond. It's crazy, but that, that's, what, that's how people think. That's how, they, that's how they're wired to think. Okay. 
Can I ask questions while we're in this? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I don't want to wait till the end, so I don't want to be. No, there. no, no. Yeah, shoot. Let's do. Let's roll. That's, so my, that's how I like it. Editors, obviously, we're different. We're not a restaurant. We're not retail. We're an organization, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's funny because we're a membership-based organization, so we tend to engage with our members and share things on our members, and we would never like. I wouldn't say acknowledge, but oh, because you're not a member, we're not gonna like your stuff or, you know what I mean? And so just over, I'm not really sure what my question is, but um, just kind of making your point to engaging with other businesses because I mean, then you're getting the brain going, right? Oh, the chamber's liking, it's making me feel good kind of thing, I guess is kind of what I'm getting at. A hundred percent. Your question is, should you engage with businesses that aren't your members? The answer is, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like you don't have to sit there and create content about them and like really yeah. give them a plug. Yeah. But if you went and just like commented on a business's post, they are far more likely to become a member of the chamber yeah. if you did that than if you weren't yeah. to do that. Yeah. 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 And, and yes, if you have questions like, you know, scream out at me or I'll just get on my soapbox and keep rolling. So yeah. That dopamine thing that you talked about and all that stuff. I posted a, a cocktail from LaSalle's. I didn't even hashtag LaSalle's. It was just cold summer nights on the patio. They noticed the background. They came in and saw my Instagram post, redid it on their on their Instagram site, and then hashtag my company. So you're right. It was like, man, they saw my cocktail picture and then you know tagged me on it and said, hey, awesome photo. And so it just totally makes you feel good. Shared it with friends. Like, look at that. They retweeted my, you know, reposted exactly. my. Exactly. Exactly. So Tim, you you have Tim, Tim has now if you, so heads up, Tim has become a walking LaSalle's promoter. Exactly <laughs> because of that. He's going to plug LaSalle's and always have good things to say about LaSalle's, no matter what. Even if he has bad experiences now, Tim is going to just like ignore them because LaSalle's like gave him some good love one He's time. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's very true. It's like you're like true. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, this slide is basically to underscore that like what I'm talking about is actually officially becoming trending, right? This has been true forever in the leadership conference. This and it's not just true for for restaurants, but consumers. Turns out they want personalized experiences from businesses, not just restaurants which is different than custom experiences, right? Like your, your business does things more custom compared to another business. Like they want personalized experiences, something that's like unique to them specifically. And they want to spend money with rest with businesses that share their common values, right? Guess how you can convey what your values are about your business. Guess where you do that. You do that on social media, right? So that's the best place to be in line with some of these consumer trends that are coming out that have been true for a long time, but finally the leaders are trying to figure this out. That's how you do it. Okay, let's see. Number three is use customer photos to tell your story. But Tim just told us a story about how that happened. So we don't have to go too, too uh, slow through this one. Uh, LaSalle's did it right, right? So they pretend this is Tim's photo. They found the photo and it looks like a great photo. And then they could have just created their own post about that photo. That's like a huge, that's a huge way to acknowledge customers online. Okay, number four is respond to reviews. And again, this sounds obvious, but I am shocked at how often business owners either just don't do it or they just agonize over this. Like they really, and I get it, like your business is your baby. And when somebody gets online and like says even one critical thing about your business, it's really sometimes hard to not take that personally. And if you don't have thick skin, and you do take it personally, you definitely shouldn't respond because you're probably going to say the wrong thing on the internet, right? But responding is really, really important, not just to bad reviews, but to positive reviews as well. So like here's a Yelp page for a, a, a coffee shop, right? And by the way, there's a bunch of photos on Yelp too. It's not just Instagram. Customers post photos on Yelp and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and food spotting and, and Foursquare, and they're, they're just all over the internet. You can find them in lots of places. Okay. And here's a fantastic five-star review. This, sh this should be responded to. Our advice is always for reviews to start with a private response first. Private is better because that's how you would do it in person, right? When somebody has something great to say about you in person, they are not saying it 
in this really loud voice for the whole room to hear. They're not doing that. They're saying, hey, give my compliments to the chef. This is really delicious. And you don't turn and say like, why, thank you. Did you hear? They said compliments to the chef. Did you all hear? Thank you, sir. That's not how it works in real life, right? You say, oh my goodness, thank you. I will, I will, be, I will tell him, I'm so glad you love your food. It's, it's a personal thing. So a private interaction achieves that same kind of uh, feeling. Sometimes you do need to respond publicly. Just know that it should be a different type of response, right? You're not, in, in our estimation, we're not necessarily talking to the reviewer as much as acknowledging that interaction, knowing there's, there's, uh, there's a public audience, right? And it could be as simple as like, hey, just want to let everybody know that we were talking to this customer privately and, uh, and helping them deal with this issue, right? It is important for con customers to see, uh, to see that you're paying attention but you don't have to like hash out the details in public. Okay, so we'll, we'll get through that. Yeah, and even with, even, with, even with bad reviews, especially private review, private response first, it's tricky because Google doesn't allow for that, neither does Facebook, they have to be public. And so you just wanna be choosy and very careful with your words. You just don't wanna open a can of worms in the public setting because for goodness sakes, we've all seen horror stories about you know, businesses that just get trashed and they just open this, they just start a fight online and it ends up just hurting their business. Like swallow the pride and let it go because your business suffers and you don't want that. Okay, so we, we, we talked that. And then flag the inappropriate reviews. Look, customers get their details wrong. Sometimes their, their comments like violate Yelp's guidelines or violate Google's or Facebook's guidelines. If they do, flag those reviews. Right. And if you give if you can argue your case and you know the guidelines well enough, like sometimes you can get them removed. That's really helpful. Like your star rating on these different platforms, they do drive consumer business. Like they do drive people to your to your to your business. They do. It influences people. Okay. So in summary, make sure your information is accurate. Acknowledge your customers. Like their comments, comment on their photos, comment on their photos and posts that are not about you necessarily. Use their, their content to tell your business's story and respond to their customer reviews. If you do all these things, you will be well on your way of, to making social media about customer service and you will be invigorating your customer base to want to spend more money with you. And right now, because of COVID, you cannot go dark on your customers. You have to keep them in the loop. And if you do go dark, you'll lose them. You will just lose them. We've been seeing it pervasively across, across the country for our clients that those who are wanting to go dark and do, they are losing their customers. And the ones that aren't are keeping them. They are keeping them. They're thriving. They're surviving. Not just surviving. They're thriving amid the pandemic, right? Okay. Questions? And if you really are itching to have like us do a little walkthrough on your business and I can give you some feedback live, like we can do that too. I'm totally game with whatever. I like the, um, the relevance, um, <clears throat> doing some of the, the grow with Google workshops with Google, my business. Um, they really talk about keeping it relevant, putting posts up on a consistent basis. And now with COVID they've opened up a few different services. So, not only about your, your COVID hours, about uh, if you're a, uh, a black owned um, company or business, right. they'll, they'll post and give you a little more um, relevance in, a, in your area. So it's nice you can get exposure um, and let people know. Um, also just posting the more relevant and the Google search stuff, they constantly talk about that. The more relevant and up to date your stuff is, the more the crawlers are gonna take that and, and put it out to people. So that was yep. one of the hugest things that they keep pushing. So mm -hmm. I'd like I tell you followed that up. It's just so so important. Yeah. You know, like if you if you are a restaurant, take pictures of your, your menu. Um, take pictures of the menu with the product. Talk about the product. Talk about where you get the produce from. Do a quick little video about it. You know, and also, you know, combine that with your with your YouTube, you know, create a, a brand channel. Yeah, so that was and let people yeah. see you making the dish uh, do something different right now in COVID. One of the things that I loved that happened during COVID was what Fifth Street Steakhouse did, where 
they're fine dining. They don't, you don't go to fifth street for takeout. You don't do that. You don't go there for curbside. You go there to dine in like fancy. And so when they shut down, they're like, great. What the heck are we going to do? And so number, the first thing they did is they started selling their steaks. Like they became a butcher shop and they, and started selling their steaks. And not only that, but their social media content was videos of their chefs with a tutorial of how to cook the perfect New nice. York Day steak or the perfect filet or the perfect salmon. And they taught their customers how to, how to cook the food, right? And it was brilliant. And they, they sold a lot of steaks. And then once they could open, they started doing orders, but just for one day and then for two days and collecting them and doing, doing pickup and delivery. So I, I love that. I love that they used video to like showcase and teach their customers how to like they were adding value to their customers. Like, do they want people to dine in and eat their steak the way they cook it? Yeah, of course. But they were willing to like share their knowledge and share their expertise so that they, they, their, they cared enough about their customers to allow them to have that experience at home, to recreate it at home. Most restaurants would never do that. They'd never share that secret, right? They, oh, well, let's provide it. It's like, no, they were open about it. And they, and they, they, they were able to survive really well. And they're still, do, they're still doing that kind of stuff. So that was one of my favorites. So you, I would like some insight. So any business that's wanting to jump onto social media, should you, how many platforms should you take on at once or at a time or implement it and know how, how it's engaging right or wrong? Um, should you just do one at a time, get it down really good, get yourself comfortable or, you know, just a little bit on each or what would that, you recommend? For someone yeah, I, I have the same question, which, what exactly what he said okay that's a really good question the the answer about which platform to choose it depends on your business for some businesses like linkedin is the one you should start with because that's where you, that's where your relevant audience is for others like it's facebook for others it's it's instagram right rarely is it going to be twitter twitter's just twitter's it's still relevant, but it's a lot of work and it's not, it doesn't give you as much, uh, as much value back. Not always, but it just takes a lot of work. So it's not the one I usually recommend to start with. Um, Facebook is still, I, I, Facebook's still king. You know, people love to say that Facebook's dying and that young people aren't on Facebook. They are on Facebook. They just don't admit it because so are their grandparents and their parents. They just don't like that they're there. Right. That's why they're on TikTok. They're on Snapchat. It's like fine, but they're still there. And you can still target them. You can still talk to them. Um, I think Instagram is really important. And it, you know, do you pick one? Yeah, I'm always a fan of like crawl before you can walk, before you can run. And if you're, if social media is still something new to you, focusing on one platform is going to be good. There are, you know, you can use tools like Hootsuite or Buffer to to create content and publish to multiple sites. My only warning about that is be very, very mindful that you're not, that you, there's some critical thought in the process. What you don't want to do is create content for Facebook or for, it's usually like create content for Instagram, auto post to Facebook, auto post to Twitter. And then all of a sudden your Facebook and Twitter content are cut off on Twitter because you exceeded the characters the hashtags and the at handle mentions from Instagram don't translate what well, the hashtags do over to Facebook. But hashtags on Facebook content, if you use more than two, that actually decreases engagement. So it's like there's little nuances about how to post on each platform that matter. So you just want to be mindful of that, right? You want to be mindful that you're not just one size fits all platforms. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you can use the same piece of content, the same picture, the same idea craft it for Instagram, just take that extra like two minutes to instead of auto post, like take that content, paste it into the composer and Facebook and modify the content so that it's for Facebook, tag the people on Facebook that you want to tag and so forth. Same thing for Twitter. So you can, you can do that. But I generally think that um, if you're starting out on social media, you just pick one platform and understand it and learn about it. There's enough commonalities where if you really focus on one, there'll be a lot of crossover. And so it'll be a much shorter learning curve to pick up another one. 
you'll just want to understand some of the nuances uh, between the two. Uh, that's how I would do it. Mark, awesome. what do you use? Do you, do, do you use Buffer? Do you use HootSuite? What do you guys use? We, we use HootSuite. We still do use HootSuite. We're on some like really old, ancient, cheap plan that they hate that we're on. And we're just still on it. And we max it out. Grandfathered in. It's just, it's super cheap. Yeah. It's like, you know, less than a quarter of what we would, what we would pay for the same thing today. Um, yeah. But we like it. it. There's definitely some drawbacks, but they're getting better ish over the years. So for our situation, Hootsuite works just fine. Um, Buffer is another one that I like. I like their company to begin with, just their culture and the way they just think about the world. Um, but their product is pretty solid. It's a, they have a pretty, a pretty, I think they have a free version for, for just a lightweight. You can pick like one or two platforms and they and the paid version is pretty inexpensive too. Yeah. That's what we're using. Yeah. I have a question. So on the flip side, say I, I get my platforms going. I just don't have the time to take care of it. And I want to hire a social media management company. Mm -hmm. You know, what would you look for or, how do you how do you qualify you know apples to apples on services and your ROI and the money you're spending? I mean it's a, that's a big question, but I mean, what's a common sense approach to um, going out to a social media company? Yeah, so the I would say probably the most important thing to look for is that they have social in their name and that they also have high rise in their name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm just <laughs> if you're a restaurant, we 100% are the best in the industry, bar none. Like we, we go toe to toe with big box ad agencies and we kick their butts and we're like a fraction of the cost. So we're proud of that. We're proud of being able to do that for restaurants everywhere. Um, but it's a good question because like there's industries where, you know, we don't take on those clients or it's just, you know, outside of where, where we can really, really help. Um, I, th I think that the, it's it's honestly it's just it's really hard to tell like to be totally totally candid it takes a trained eye to understand the difference between okay content and great content like an okay strategy versus a great winning strategy like the lay the lay person you can't tell the difference i mean you you look at it and it's like well this looks good that looks good too but there may be some really fundamental differences in the strategy. And, and sometimes it's hard to tell like that a, a bad strategy when you see it, like bad content. Some people are just like, I don't know. I, I don't know what good looks like. So it's, it, it's, it's difficult and challenging. I, I typically, um, it, it's at the end of the day, the agency or the person or the company that's representing you on social media, they need to be capable of representing you in an extremely authentic way. There might be some, there might be some uh, limitations in maybe some of the, the capabilities or the, the, the ways that they can do that, but that when they are representing you, it is 100% authentic. And I typically tell businesses to not settle for anything that's generic, anything that um, doesn't, doesn't represent you well, like pay attention to the language. And the reason I say that is because, again, you're not talking to just randos on the internet. You're talking to your core customers. They're talking to people who know your business, who are familiar with you. They know what your voice probably sounds like. And it's not uncommon to see a, an agency come in and do work for a business and they're completely off base and they have no idea and they don't really even care to try to figure it out. And the, and the business either isn't paying attention or the, maybe they don't understand their own voice to know, but the customers know, and you start seeing like, what's going on with your page? Like who's doing this? This is weird. Right? So sometimes you can figure that out in the interview process, but even once you, once you get into an, a, a, you know, into a relationship, I would just say, pay attention to what they're doing and, and spend the time, you know, it's, it's, you want to hire them and then forget it. So you don't have to worry about it anymore, but it's like, it's worth it to pay attention to how they're, you know, you can trust their ideas perhaps, but as long as they're not articulating your story and your business in a way that's not actually representative of who you are, right? That's it. 
And sometimes, like, I would also say the caveat to that is be patient in those er the early beginnings of that process. Like, they can't read your mind. They can't know everything about you in one, in one go. So be patient with that. But make sure you give them the feedback and expect to see feedback Im implemented, right? And implemented, like, permanently, hopefully, so that they're not just kind of going back into some rut that's not you. That, that's it. That's what I would look for. They may not be able to, they might not be able to do video. They might not be able to do like, you know, live stuff. Fine. But just the, the photos, the commentary, the interactions, the responses, yeah. like that stuff should just feel genuine as if you were writing it on your best day, the way that you would want to talk in person to somebody. Right. Yeah. I just want to say we are at time, but if people want to keep going, if Mark, if you're still open, we could keep this going, but I just want to be um, respectful to other people's time. Um, but I have some more questions. <laughs> yeah, Mark, yeah. I got one for you if you have a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm good on time. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark, my, my question for you is when you're just starting out in social media management, what do you think the best way to acquire new clients is? On social media? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did I, sorry, did I hear you? Did, did I hear you right? How you acquire, how to acquire? Yeah, like how do you how do you recommend building your pipeline? Like, do, you, do you email? Do you walk around and meet businesses? Do you just really blow up your own social media? I, I, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Again, like it it really does matter like the nature of your business. If you're a consumer facing business, social media is a great place to be because you can. You can get in front of consumers. When you're a B2B business, social media is still important. Um, it's just a little bit different. It's a different approach. Uh, like, for example, our, for, for years, our, our strategy, if you were to go on Social High Rise's uh, page, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, we're, we're changing that as of like about a month, month and a half ago. Um, we, we started changing it a little bit. But previous to that, you'll notice that almost all of our content was about our company culture. That's it. Okay. Because our, our strategy was that, you know what, we manage social media for restaurants. Guess what? They're probably not on social media hanging out, looking, looking at right. like, doing social media personally, because that's, that's who our target is, the ones who aren't doing it. And so we, we um, but we did notice that like anyone who, who was worth a damn and, and applied for a job here, they were usually mm -hmm. looking at our social media. So we wanted that to be a place where we could really, really showcase who we who we were as a company, and it, got it, and, got it. and it was a recruiting tool, right? Yeah, but if you're I've, I've been going through it right now, actually. <laughs> going yeah, 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 yeah. You're trying you'll, to get an idea. Yeah, so that's been our strategy. But if you're trying to go after consumers, then yeah, social media is a good start. If you're trying to acquire, that, this is the challenge. It's like chicken and the egg. It's like you want to grow your following, but how do you do that organically? You can do it organically. It's just a slow start. I'm always a fan of like jump starting your page with like a little bit of a, of a, ad, a, a ad campaign. Uh -huh. it'll, it'll be a good exercise in trying to drill down into who your like most lowest hanging fruit target audience is in targeting uh -huh. them with whatever your like best value prop is. Um, there's a billion ways to do ads. I we could spend all day talking about the ways that you could, you know, acquire customers with ads. There's lead ads where you can get leads and give something away. You can run, you know, you can run like top of the funnel campaigns for reach or engagement with a video. And then you can create custom audiences for everyone who watched that video and then retarget them with a higher call to action, like a higher, you know, middle or bottom of the funnel thing. And then retard. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can like really work an ad campaign, mm -hmm. but if you're really just trying to get like some exposure and just kind of yeah. test the waters to figure out who those people might be, um, you know, spending a hundred bucks on an ad campaign and, and targeting as, 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 as specifically as you can, who your best, best customers would be is a mm -hmm. good way to get feedback and to, uh, and, and when they engage, here's the thing, when they engage with your ads, a lot of mm -hmm. people don't know this, but you can, I feel like Trump, a lot of people don't know this, but <laughs> they really don't know this that for some reason that you can go into ads manager on your ad and you can, the people who have engaged with that ad, you can invite them to like your page. That's a really, oh, really, really, 
That's a great strategy for building your audience. And you can do the same thing on your regular content. A lot of businesses forget about that. Like you just go to your posts and you click on the people who have liked, liked or reacted to your posts and you can go and just invite, 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 invite. And guess what? People will, people will like you because they engage with your content. So that's a good way to do it. Um, but you can do it with ads. And so the, the benefit is that you're running ads to target people who don't necessarily know who you are. And so uh -huh. the people who, who you're inviting are like, fre like fresh blood, right? And then they're engaging with your organic content. And by, by engaging there, then you're able to get friends and family of those folks. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I have to go, but um, I'm wondering yeah. the things that you mentioned about just ad management and the right and wrong content and hashtags and maybe just bring that each platform. Um, I don't know if you and Tim or Chico Star might want to do like sort of one of <laughs> for the for webinars yeah just kind of more of a deep dive on some of the things that you mentioned mm -hmm. like you said you could talk all day on ad management yeah tim tim needs help that'd be great <laughs> no that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> Anyway, right. um i have to peel off too but mark i just want to let you know that this was great and yeah. we're so so very grateful to have you as a local resource and um we need we, we're going to shut down this whole thing right now um and you know uh we look forward you know if you enjoyed it we look forward to having you back in a, in a little while yeah that was awesome oh show oh show uh, we do our, our customer um e-communication tomorrow like marketing that kind of stuff and so i would love to use your recording in this um webinar recap for our communication tomorrow yep, yep. if you, if you guys want to get if you, here's my email if you guys want to get I'll a hold of me <laughs> tag me Get jiggy with it. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. That's it. Well, thanks for having me on here. Yeah, it's always fun to talk about this. You can tell that I get super geeky and passionate about this topic. And as you can tell, like there are a million ways that you can get real deep in how to do one thing or, an or another. I hope that this was valuable. I hope this got your wheels spinning. Um, my email is right here. If you have other questions that we couldn't answer, feel free to shoot them over my way. I'm happy to answer them offline. Yes, Heather, I'd be happy to, to do more webinars like this. Um, it, it'd, be my, it'd be my pleasure. We're doing one with the New York Restaurant Association pretty soon. We're doing one with the Western Food Service Show. So we, we've got webinars on the brain right now. So it's a good time. All right. Well, lucky us. We got some of your time. All right. And you get your thank yous from your audience. Awesome sauce. Right. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. You are welcome. All right, peace out. Peace out.